Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I'm Natalie, and I'm so glad you're here because today we're making deodorant. This is something I've wanted to try for so long, but I wasn't really willing to commit to it until I knew I had a recipe I could trust. Now, my friends over at the VW Family Farms posted a recipe a while ago about their favorite recipe for deodorant. Now, if they swear by a recipe and they're out there farming with their chicken and their cattle and just doing all the stuff that they do over there and they like this recipe, well then I think it must be a pretty good recipe and I'm really excited to try it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for today's recipe, you're gonna need an old deodorant container. You can buy these new, but I'm repurposing this old one because it's one less thing in the landfill. I clean this out by removing any leftover deodorant scrubbing it out as best as I could and pouring boiling water in and out until it flushed out completely clear and just scrubbing it as best as I could to remove anything of that old deodorant. Then you're gonna need some coconut oil, some beeswax, this is leftover from my DIY candles. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, go check out that video. Some essential oils, I'm using lavender, some baking soda, some arrowroot powder, and some bentonite clay. Now the arrowroot powder and bentonite clay are less standard items, and so I found these at our local mother's market. I don't know if there's mother's markets around the nation, but um, you could probably find these items on Amazon if you don't have a health food store near you. The bowl to mix everything in, and last thing you're gonna need is a pot with some water in it. Ours has just started to boil, so it's time to get started. All right, so basically what I've got going here is a double broiler. And the first thing we're gonna add is our one-third coconut oil. This is what's going to suspend our scent and it's also going to make our deodorant spreadable. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of beeswax. All right guys, this next part's super important. This bowl is very, very hot, so we're gonna move, remove it very carefully. Gonna set that aside and prepare a place for it in the fridge. All right guys, so as our mixture cools, I thought we could talk for a minute about what exactly do each of these ingredients add to the overall recipe. So first off, we've got the coconut oil. And coconut oil is a natural antiseptic. It's got great natural qualities to it, but it also makes waxes easier to spread. So next up, we've got beeswax. Beeswax on its own is very hard. It's not very malleable at all. So by adding the coconut oil to the beeswax, we're making what would be a really hard balm into something more malleable and easier to spread across the skin. Now, as far as the baking soda goes, what I understand this element to add to the recipe is that it's basically a freshening element. And if you guys have sensitive skin, you might not wanna to add too much of it because it can be an irritant, it's salt, and it's gritty. Next up, we've got the arrowroot powder, which is essentially a starch. This is going to help bind everything together and make it kind of conglomerate. Last but not least, we've got the bentonite clay. Now, bentonite clay is really awesome. I bought it yesterday for this recipe and I used it on my face last night as I was getting ready for bed because you can use it as a facial mask and my face felt so nice afterwards and I really like this product just from what I know of it from personal use so far. It's got some really great qualities to it. It's got healing properties and detoxifying properties. While I was in the shower, I went ahead and threw some underneath my armpits to try and detox any of these chemicals that I've been putting into my armpits out of my body and I don't know, my armpits felt pretty nice afterwards, so that's a plus. Um, and then last but not least, we've got the essential oil. That's basically gonna be your fragrance. Now we know that essential oils have a lot of benefits to them from calming to energizing. I'm going with lavender, which is more of a calming scent. It's what I have on hand. It's actually the only essential oil I have right now, so I thought I would try it out and see if I like it. I figured if I'm going to sweat some kind of scent out of my armpits, it might as well be something that's calming, so. We'll see how it goes. So that's a little info for you on what these different elements add to the overall recipe and why they're important in the recipe. Maybe gives you some information on what you can tweak in your recipe. If you would like a harder balm, well, more beeswax and less coconut oil, or if you want more healing properties, perhaps you could take some coconut oil out and add more bentonite clay. It's really up to you. From what I understand, this recipe is pretty foolproof. So the sky's the limit with how you can alter this to meet your individual needs. 
All right, let's check on our mixture. All right, so our mixture has cooled down quite a bit. It's still very liquidy, but as you can see from these little rings that are forming around the edge, it is open to cooling down now. So we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, I'm adding about three quarter tablespoon of baking soda. Kind of a, an opaque, light yellow color. Now I've gotta do a shout out. I've gotta do a shout out to Sid and Connie over at Mother's Market in Laguna Hills because you guys helped me find this giant bag of arrowroot powder and I'm really thankful for you guys. So thank you so much for helping me find this because I wouldn't have found it without you guys. And last but not least, we're going to do, here goes nothing, pretty much the final product. Like I said, I've never made this before, so I really don't know what to expect. It smells really good. It looks like it's gonna dry really well. Everything seems to be really mixed well in there, so that's, that's encouraging. All right, so that's what it's looking like after we've combined all of the ingredients. Not really the prettiest color, but it's all natural and it's got some healing properties, so that's pretty cool. Now all that's left to do is fill our little reusable tube up. All right guys, so like I said, not the prettiest color, but repurposed material, all natural material inside. I'm really excited to try this out. I should note that the VW Family Farm recipe makes four. My recipe looks like it makes about two of these. So if you're looking to know about how much material to buy or how much it will make, this recipe makes about two deodorants worth. I realized as I was cleaning up that this recipe is not an antiperspirant. So if you're looking for something to prevent you from sweating, this is not going to prevent you from sweating. But I want you to know that preventing your sweat glands from working might have consequences. I'm not a medical doctor and this is certainly not medical advice, but I would strongly urge you to do the research on what is in commercial deodorants that makes you not sweat. Seriously look into it. I looked into it today and what I found was really alarming. Aluminum salts, parabens, and a lot of other things that are chemically based, that are shown to have genotoxins, and some hypothesize are linked to breast cancer. I'm gonna be coming out with another video on, hey, does this stuff even work? Which, by the way, I just put it on and it feels actually really good. Um, <laughs> didn't wanna be like TMI and like show you my pits and do it, but anyway, just so you know, it's on and it's feeling good. Um, so I'm gonna do a video on does this stuff really work? And I'm also thinking of doing another video on all of the research that I compiled before even considering making my own deodorant. I think it's important to be informed about why we're making these natural choices. If your reason for doing more natural things in your life is simply because it makes you feel better, then that's reason enough. That's usually where I land. I'm like, you know what? I just like the way natural products make me feel. I don't really like the way fake scents and chemicals and all that stuff. I don't really like the way it makes me feel, so I'm good with doing it a more natural way. But there are other people, like my husband, who like to play devil's advocate and say, well, those other things can't really be that bad for you, can they? In my opinion, those other things are not very good for you. And there's a lot of research that indicates that. Now, there's not a lot of research that says, yes, this is what causes that. But if you look at it in terms of a chain reaction that could lead to things like literally what I read today, genetic mutation, cancer, endocrine issues, and exposure to too much estrogen. Well, those are all things that I don't want in my life. Does that mean that I'm gonna have an instant negative reaction to commercial deodorant? No, I used com commercial deodorant for like 10 years. It does mean that I'm exposing myself to unnecessary chemicals and it's my goal this year to take back control, make more DIY stuff. And that's what this series is gonna be all about, is making natural products for the home. So soaps, deodorants, detergent, dishwashing liquid, all of that. I want to start changing all of that in my home because having more natural elements and ways of cleaning simply make me feel better. But I also believe that research would show chemicals aren't that great for us and we need a better way. So just wanted to chime in here with some final thoughts and let you know that this is not an antiperspirant, but that antiperspirants really aren't that good for you. And I thought I would also just shamelessly plug that this is gonna be part of a series of making more homemade soaps and scents and detergents and all that stuff. So stay tuned for more videos like this. That's it. I hope this video blesses you guys and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. For more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe and that bell button. And of course, I would love to hear from you. So be sure to drop me a comment down below. If you guys have questions or comments, maybe you guys have your own recipe that you'd like to share. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.